Well now to our small cap company in focus tonight, Australian Power and Gas, a relative newcomer to the energy retailing market, signing on its first customer just three years ago. But it has managed to turn in some positive news to the market in its short life. Late last year forecasting strong profit growth on the back of a rapidly expanding customer base. The company's CEO, who is also the chairman of the Energy Retailers Association, James Myatt, joins us now in the studio. James, great to have you in. Thanks so much for your time. Just firstly, tell us a bit about the company because at the moment you're, you're selling uh, energy and gas, uh, electricity and gas to customers in Victoria, but you've obviously got expansion plans with licenses in other states uh, that, on the way. That's right. So our, our primary customer base is in Victoria. Um, we do have licenses in Queensland, New South Wales, ACT and South Australia and we sort of look at each of those markets for an energy retail business we have to be able to make a, a, a margin, a profit to compete in those states. Victoria has the most viable markets at the moment um, but conditions are looking more favourable into New South Wales and Victoria, uh, New South Wales and Queensland. We do have some customers in, in those states and we keep an operating system that allows us to work in those states. but. This year we're starting to see the, the forward price of wholesale electricity is, is moving downwards um, and as we were talking just before, governments are starting to, to look at the, the maximum price that can be charged for energy to make it a more cost reflective basis which means that there will be available margin in those markets uh, to, for retailers to compete in uh, which is the conditions that we really need. You say you're seeing the, the cost of wholesale electricity coming down. What, what's driving that lower? It's coming down from, um, we saw some big spikes in 2007. There was quite severe drought conditions, particularly in Queensland and, and, and somewhat in Victoria. And that re resulted in the Queensland uh, energy generators withdrawing some of the hydro capacity they had in the marketplace. And that really saw a spike in prices. So about 20% of the capacity came out of the Queensland market in 2007, which saw prices rising from an, an average of you know, high $30 a megawatt hours a unit to, to, to you know, 80 to $100 a megawatt hour. So the rest of the market sort of moved in line with, with, with those numbers and we've really only just seen the price of that come down to a more normalised level now. So it's still, it's, uh, there's still a lot of uh, mainly coal-fired generation in, that, in those numbers, uh, but we do see energy wholesale moving down from where it was at a sort of an unsustainable level at that, that higher level. As a smaller energy retailer, how hard is it going up against big established companies? Oh, we, we actually quite enjoy it, um, <laughs> yeah. okay. purely because we think we've got a, a good model that, that, that competes. So my, most of my team have, have worked for some of the larger energy companies, um, so we have experience certainly how, how they think and how they operate, and that's where we, we think the opportunity really, really lies. Um, Sort of as you see the smaller airlines starting up and smaller banks, you know, who are starting up, you know, there's always opportunity when you have large incumbent players for a smaller player to, to come up and maybe offer something a little bit different, do things a little bit differently. Um, so we actually enjoy the, enjoy the challenge. So Victoria is actually the most competitive market in the world. Uh, there's rankings out that are done uh, globally and Victoria is the most competitive market in the world. So we take quite a lot of pride in the fact that we are a successful retailer in, in that marketplace. So you know, we think we can offer, offer customers something a little bit different to what they can get from, from some of the bigger guys. So. Because the, the, the bigger companies, I, I'd assume, would be able to, you know, they, they've got bigger purchasing power so they can offer uh, cheaper prices, you would think. I mean, what's your point of difference? How do you compete against that? Look, I, th they do have a different portfolio on the, on the wholesale side. The, the, the wholesale market is a, is a traded market as well, so they, they do have, uh, we have a sort of an equal opportunity to, to, to buy uh, at, at a similar level to what they do. But I think the, the thing that really differentiates us is, is the, the fact that we're a very low cost operation ourselves. You know, we, we operate with a, with a staffing of about, oh, about 40 people in, in total, so it's, it's a, it's a, our operating costs are much lower than what the, what the bigger guys are. So we see actually our com competitive advantage of being able to deliver the product more cheaply by being a far more efficient operation. So, you know, we, we really focus on trying to automate as much of our process as possible and by building a business from the ground up we've really been able to have a, a good look at the way uh, the inefficiencies in some of the other models and say look we want to do things differently, do it with less people and, and at the end of the day it means we can offer a lower price. So we actually do offer a, a, a competitive price. A lot of I guess uh 
shorts in, in the system, though, possibly coming, uh, if you like. Energy prices, very topical issue at the moment. How hard is it, I guess, putting your, your hat on as the, the chair of the Energy Retailers Association, how hard is it to convince consumers that retail prices will have to go up for energy? Because obviously we have seen some of the state governments uh, well, effectively overturning rulings by their own uh, you know, pricing and, and regulatory tribunals saying that there should be large increases in, in retail prices, that, that that's what it actually costs. How hard is that as a business? Oh look, it's a, it's a challenge and, and if we talk as the Energy Retailers Association, we certainly have a strong drive for, for state governments and, and, and the authorities that regulate the prices in the states where there is regulated price pricing, which Victoria doesn't have any longer, it has a price monitoring mm -hmm. uh, regime. And the, the goal of the organisation is very much to make uh, the price of energy cost reflective. And I think, you know, most of us would accept that goods come at a price and therefore we have to pay the price of goods costs. So artificially holding pricing down, although while it might be palatable in the, in the short term, it does have longer term ramifications. And there's certainly issues in the Western Australian regime at the moment where prices have been held down for a, a long time, where they're seeing very, very dramatic rises um, happening at the moment and the government's actually having to subsidise some of the generators in that state in order to keep them viable and, and, and at the end of the day if you're selling a product below what it costs someone's got to pay um, and the cases where the state governments own certain assets um, the, the taxpayers or the constituents will, will end up paying some of that cost there's no, no question someone has to pay at the end of the day.